Hi folks, um, this is a slightly off topic subject, but I was tagged into um, a thing the other day by Paddy Potato Peelers, which is the um, Three Knife Peeves. Um, now, about 15 years ago, I had an operation on my neck, which uh, I woke up from it and found myself paralyzed from the neck down. I spent three months in hospital unable to move and then a further six months in a spinal rehab ward learning to uh, walk and uh, use my hands to a limited degree. Um, so after that, everything else in life that might peeve people, I find minor, very minor irritations. It's very difficult to get upset about anything after all of that. Um, every day is a bonus in, in, my, in my life. So, but I thought about it and actually I thought actually there are things that I keep moaning about endlessly. So I thought uh, uh, that's what I will talk about here. And the first one is this. You'll see here I've got three knives. I've got a, a, a liner lock knife, I've got a, a fixed blade knife and I've got a collar lock knife here. Um, and there is this theory that for a knife to be safe and usable and for it not to want to chop your fingers off it needs to either have a lock or be a fixed blade now the truth is i just managed to cut myself actually with this knife here which is a lock knife but normally speaking i don't generally cut myself um and i certainly not because a knife uh, lock has failed. Now I've been using this knife here personally since 1974. It's actually been, uh, it was actually on issue to the British Navy from 1939 onwards, has no lock and I'm using this in 1974 and I still have a full complement of 10 fingers. Um, if that wasn't enough, uh, Victorinox have been making Swiss Army knives for over 100 years and the vast majority of those, including all the ones that used to be issued to the Swiss Army, the soldier, were um, uh, lock free and most uh, people who've used them still have most of their fingers. And this knife here has been on the go in uh, Sheffield in England since the 1660s, uh, which, you know, gives it some pedigree, never had a lock on it. And in Europe, they were using uh, knives like this, uh, what's now known as a sodbuster. There is a German equivalent name, but I can't remember what it is. Um, they've been using that again for three or four hundred years, and again without everybody losing all their fingers. Uh, slip joint knives do not fold on you unless you misuse them. Um, and have you, if you're brought up with a with uh, slip joints? You learn how to use them very early on. You don't stab with them. You don't, um, uh, you know, try saw cuts. You do cuts towards you, or you know, you can cut string with them by by bending the string over the blade or whatever. the The application of force on a slip joint knife is always made down the way in this direction. You never try doing anything which involves pushing a knife like that because it could fold in you but once you use the tool properly you won't cut your, you they won't fold on you they won't chop your fingers off it's really incompetent by the user bad workman blames his tools so that's my first gripe out of the way the second one is this um, I like British made knives as Nick Shabazz says, I cheer for the home side and I happen to be British. And there are knives like these, and funnily enough, Nick could also put this into the category, that are uh, made in Britain. These ones are handmade and written quite recently uh, by somebody called Lee Wright at uh, Taylor's Eyewitness. And they're beautiful knives, beautifully finished, beautifully made. They come sharp, lovely polish on them and everything else. So we can do it, but instead we have knives coming out of uh, factories like these today, 
which sell on the idea that they are handmade, hand finished knives, and yet um, the fit and finish is just appalling. Now, I could argue with this one. Look at that. I mean, the asymmetry of it is just horrendous. The bolsters, one's fat, one's thin. The scales, one's thin, one's fat. The gaps between the springs and the liners is just appalling. The uh, fit of the blade to the handle, just awful. Um, now, this is a cheap knife. It's only 20 quid. Maybe you can get, maybe you can cut them a bit of slack for that. But this, there's no excuse for this. This is a premium uh, graded knife. It's got this lovely chiselled working on the back spine and on the, the liners. And yet they allow fit and finish like that, the blade to the back spring uh, at a rather jaunty angle. The gap between the uh, back spring and the left hand liner, the asymmetry of the bolsters, the asymmetry of the scales, the gapping at the, at the tail end of the knife there. And worst of all, and I, this I just cannot understand that a manufacturer would do this. The stamping of their name on the Ricasso is illegible. Now, if you're going to turn out a premium grade knife, surely you want your name at least to be legible. A decent polish on the blade would have been quite nice without all the scratching as well. Uh, I mean, they can do it. This one here is another £20 knife. And it, it, it is perfectly legible, perfectly well done. And actually, of all the, the knives I've had from them, there's a bit of gapping there, but it's probably the best fit and finish, and that's a sub £20 knife. Um, this is a £60 knife. They can't manage the fit and finish. It's just a poly. Now, to be slightly fair to British manufacturers, we could just say it's just British, it's not. This is a German handmade knife. Again, it was from Solingen, and you expect Solingen, like Sheffield, you expect Solingen to turn out decent quality handmade knives. And yet, fit and finish on this is, is, is as bad, if not worse, than the Sheffield made knives, gapping all the way down the back, between the back spring and the liners and the fit and finish between the blade and the back spring it's just horrible um so they can make the same mistake but there are plenty of manufacturers today for example in spain make a handmade knife with lovely fit and finish um i would say it's not maybe not perfect but it's very close there's a very small gap uh, between the liner and the back spring there, but it's it's very very minimal. Um, and this, for example, this is South African. But look at that, perfect, absolutely perfect. So it can be done, but we just choose not to do it at the moment, which is a bit ridiculous. Now the final thing, the final piece, and this is my biggest one of all, um, and that's this. Now, here we have a two and a half inch bladed pocket knife. And for scale, there's a Swiss Army Spartan. So it's that sort of size of knife. Compared to, for example, this, the Manly Wasp, or perhaps even more pertinently, the SOG Terminus. Now these have much bigger, meatier blades. The SOG um, is even available in a murderous black finish with a black handle and a blacked out blade. But these two, are legal to carry in the UK. This one here is officially an offensive weapon. It's covered by the Offensive Weapons Bill. And to carry that in the UK um, can land you with a four year prison sentence. Two convictions, a second conviction, carries a compulsory 
custodial jail sentence for carrying a two inch knife. Now this is all in the name of stopping the rise in knife crime and the rise in stabbings in the UK. But most stabbings are carried out with kitchen knives. Kitchen knives are really not covered by the Offensive Weapons Act. And in fact, in Scotland, to go and buy um, even something like this from a shop with a two inch blade without a, with, it's not really very pointy uh, or a Swiss army knife like this you need to be 18 but you can buy a 10 inch kitchen knife in a from a supermarket if you're 16 or well, you can go to your mum's kitchen drawer and take out her finest uh, cook's knife or her cheapest paring knife or whatever else you can find and you can take them out and go and stab your friends and throw the knife away knowing that it only cost a few pounds um, with um, with ease you're not exactly going to go out and, and buy one of these to go and stab somebody with and you're certainly not going to spend 400 pounds on a Menandi and then go out and stab someone with it knowing of course you're going to have to then throw that knife away uh, a cheap kitchen knife will do the job better cheaper and uh, you can just dispose of it after it's done so British knife laws are straightforwardly hypocrisy so there we are there's my three uh, peeves the, th the theory that slip joint knives will always fold on you and cut your fingers off nonsense um, the fit and finish of British made handmade knives which should be exemplary is absolutely appalling and I think that's really letting the side down and thirdly our UK knife laws are ridiculous um, which I think anybody who has anything to do with these things will realise is so so that's it thank you very much goodbye